Hey y'all, it is uh, Friday, June 23rd. The time is 18.31, New York local time. Um, I'm going to go through each and every one of my futures products here and look for our AM Silver Bullets. So, ICT Silver Bullet model. We're going to be using regular trading hours today. Regular trading hours. So, I'm going to block out the AM time on the ES. So there it is right there. And we're going to look for an inefficiency that price trades into and then um, see if we got a trade. So let's use the one minute time frame. Looking for an inefficiency prior to a drive on liquidity in the AM session. Here it was on the one minute chart on the ES. So we have a fair value gap here. Came in at the end of the session. Okay. So this was a trade that you could take as price actually traded up into. Now, you really had two options here to use your inefficiency. So number one, you had the regular trading hours gap, which uh, I'm just going to ignore for now. I'm just going to use classic um, ICT silver bullets rather than uh, so. Like, for example, let's talk about the difference. So if we were to use our regular trading hours gap here, you could see that price actually traded up. If you want to call this an AM silver bullet, we traded up into uh, the regular trading hours gap, and we traded just above the 25% uh, retracement of that gap. So, so there, there was an inefficiency there to get short on. But for this example, just going through these quickly, um, I'm just going to review the classic model. So uh, we have our AM high here come in at um, 3.99 uh, three quarters. So that's um, again our AM high came in at uh, 4,399 and three quarters. Price traded down, created a displacement fair value gap here. Traded back into it by looks like one tick, and then had you gotten short there, let's see if we could have gotten five points. Yeah, so immediately you're, you had up to eight and a half points there with no retracement. So there was your AM silver bullet there, classic AM silver bullet without using a regular trading hours gap concept on the ES. Let's go to the YM and let's block out 10 to 11 using regular trading hours. 10 to 11. We're looking for a trade into inefficiency that seeks liquidity. Let's go down to the one minute time frame. So a little bit difficult to spot here on the YM, um, but you had a couple of options. So number one, we had an inefficiency here. That was a volume imbalance. So you could have used that to get short and it would have taken you into drawdown and then back into your favor. So you had this volume imbalance you could have gotten short on. Using ICT's um, classic model, we'd look for a fair value gap. And I'm going to say right there. Get short there. Take, um, take drawdown. And then ultimately, uh, it offered you 38 YM points. So you did take drawdown twice. You took drawdown twice on this. And then it offered you up to 38 points on the short. Now, again, I'm not using the regular trading hours concept, which um, had you use the regular trading hours gap as your inefficiency rather than just um, looking for the classic model. You can see that, that uh, price was trading. Uh, let's see right there. Yeah, so price at that point, just in the 10 to 11 hour, was trading up above the 25% retracement of the regular trading hours gap. But just using Michael's classic model, uh, you had a short sort of silver bullet setup right here. And had you taken it further in going into the London close, it offered you up to 58 points. So there it was on the YM. NQ. Let's go to our NQ and see if we can find an AM silver bullet without using the regular trading hours concept. I think this one's going to be tough. Okay, so I'm not seeing it on the short side here, but what I am seeing, fair value gap right here. Here it was. 
aim silver bullet right there and had you gotten in let's say at the bottom of that fair value gap it offered you up to 51 NASDAQ points now this would have been counter to the overall draw so obviously we ended up coming back lower on the day but um, your AM silver bullet to the long side on the NASDAQ came in right here at 1026 so we we had our opening volatility we formed a displacement to the long side had you gotten long here it offered you uh, just an immediate profit up into right near the regular trading hours gap up into this rejection block and that offered you well, let's say reasonably 51 points or 44 points if you got in the middle of the fair value gap so there was your AM silver bullet to the long side on the NASDAQ Russell 2000 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock not using our regular trading hours concept let's go down to let's go up to the five minute time frame and see if it's there yeah okay so came in at the end right there very end of the tail end of the hour there was your AM silver on the Russell 2000 right there Get short offered you up to 9.4 points which was also the 50% I'm gonna say it's probably about the 50% of that so 9.4 points offered at the very end of the hour five minute time frame Russell let's just say you took the first swing that was 8.7 points so there it was on the Russell 2000 Australian dollar futures 10 to 11 let's see if it was there looking for a fair value gap that price trades back into two minute chart not using our regular trading hours concept or the, the RTH gap Australian dollar features it's right there AM silver bullet take it say you took um, at the bottom of this fair value gap it immediately uh, it immediately offered you 18 ticks but then had you taken it back on the drawdown the second leg offered you 23 ticks and then had you waited all the way up until just about New York lunch it offered you 36 ticks which was also the 50% I'm gonna say that's probably the 50% yeah okay also offered you this so Australian dollar futures had it pound futures Yeah, so immediately I'm saying it. This this one doesn't take. Yeah, right there on the two-minute chart. There's your AM silver right there. Displacement higher. We get a buy side inefficiency. We trade back into it. And that immediately offered you 16 pips. And then had you held it on into New York lunch, it offered you ultimately 29 pips total. So we ended up running this, this low. Not ideal, but it was there. Canadian dollar futures 10 to 11 um, two minute charts not immediately visible to me well, a five minute chart let's try the four minute chart I'm not seeing it three minute chart You know, there was one here. I'm going to say right there. Take it to the long side. So you get short at the bottom of this fair value gap. That offered you 20 pips. So that's what I'm going to say on the AM silver for the Canadian dollar futures. Now, if you're a keen ICT student, you know that this very long wick here is an inefficiency so we actually traded up into about the 61 percent retracement of this long wick which is very long wick and that's an inefficient price so similarly you could have gone short here let's just say right above the say uh, ideal scenario 
and that short side silver bullet offered you 31 ticks. So you could have taken it to the long side or you could have taken it to the short side. Either way it would have worked out. Your futures. 10 to 11. 10, 11. See if we can see it on the five minute chart. I don't see it on the five minute chart. Let's see if we go down to a four minute. Yeah, there it is right there. Okay. Bang, bang, right there. 10 to 11, short. AM silver. And if you got short at the top of that fair value gap, it immediately offered you 28 ticks. Again, that's 28 ticks on the Euro futures for your AM silver bullet. Japanese yen futures. Let's take a look. 10 to 11. Not using our regular trading hours gap concept, which I in my live trading I use that a lot. Um, yen futures. Wow. Okay, big movement down on the yen futures right from the opening. And I'm going to tell you that there was multiple silver bullets here to get short on those yen futures. But what I'm seeing, so volume imbalance here right at the start of the trading hour. Right there, there was one. And there was two right there. So there was your AM silver bullet there on the Japanese yen futures. And let's say that you took the second volume imbalance and you held it down to the low. That was 52 ticks on the Japanese yen futures. And again, we're looking for an inefficiency formed between 10 and 11. We're looking for price to trade back into it and then go seek liquidity. On our Japanese yen futures, we see that we had two volume imbalances that price during the setup time traded back into. And so that is something to note. Let's see if we look at our regular trading hours. Um, right before see right before the setup time so 15 minutes before the setup time 15 minutes before the setup time on the Japanese yen futures there is also this okay so three opportunities to get short on the Japanese yen futures which were seeking liquidity lower today so 15 minutes before the setup time we had this volume imbalance that price traded back into during the setup time, if you want to be conservative and just paint within the lines, I totally understand. I only go 15 minutes outside. Uh, we have one AM silver bullet trade back into an inefficiency and a second AM silver bullet that also, again, traded back in, into an inefficiency. New Zealand dollar futures, 10 to 11. 10 to 11. Okay, so the first thing to notice is that if you are using a regular trading hours as your inefficiency, it obviously ticked above and then went short. So there was that. Well, let's say that you're just using Michael's classic model. Let's go to a five minute time frame, see if we can see it there. Yeah, there it was, right there. So separation between these two candles take drawdown on the trade, but uh, end up doing pretty well. AM silver bullet on the New Zealand dollar futures right there. And you would have taken um, a few ticks of drawdown. So what is that? What was that? Seven ticks of drawdown? And it offered you a return of 41 ticks before uh, trading in a consolidation for the rest of the day. So New Zealand dollar futures offered you 41 ticks. Swiss franc futures. 10 to 11. 10 to 11. Just using our regular trading hours. Five minute chart. Yeah, there it is. Very visible. Right there. Same silver bullet. Take that trade in that tick. It immediately offers you 50 ticks. And there was your AM silver bullet on the Swiss franc. Gold. 10 to 11. 
gold. Um, fair value gap. Right there. M silver bullet. So you get short um, in that right there. And gold ended up trading lower during the regular trading hours, ultimately offering you 159 pips. Okay? Which that 159 pips, if you'll happen to notice, I'm going to bet you that's about, I'll look at that, 75% of our regular trading hours gap. So good short there on gold after our resettlement uh, much higher on gold. We get a displacement lower um, on New York Open as we expect. We trade back into an inefficiency as we expect during the time that we expect. And it traded back down to the 75% retracement of our RTH gap. So that was definitely visible there on gold. Copper. Okay, copper, 10 to 11. 10 to 11. Huh, not seeing it. Now uh, you could have taken long here. That would have uh, ultimately been a scratch on the, on the day. So, 10 to 11. Ah, but there she is right there. Lower time frame, 30 minute time frame, it is visible. There's our separation that we're looking for right there. There's your copper AM silver bullet. You get short there, and let's take a look. It offers you 43 ticks coming down to this low. Also repricing this uh, by, excuse me, sell side inefficiency right here. Okay, so we get, um, we get short during the expected time on a buy side inefficiency and we trade down into a sell side inefficiency here on copper right there so that offered you 43 pips silver we re remove the drawings here silver 10 to 11 10 to 11 we're looking for an inefficiency which price retrades back into now Let's take a look at our opening, our RTH gap concept. Your RTH gap is an inefficiency. And as you can see, uh, you actually could have gotten short on silver futures um, 15 minutes before the setup time right here, okay, and, and held it lower. Now, if you are not, you know, using your regular trading hours gaps as an inefficiency, which it is, but if you're just not using that concept yet in your silver bullet trading, I totally understand. Michael does not actually teach that, uh, but I use it, and um, obviously the RTH gap is an inefficiency, so you could have taken that initial trade. Now, let's see if we have a more classic model, and the answer is yes, but the, the move had already been mostly done, so it's right here. 3 minute chart, aim silver. And had you gotten short right there, that offered you 28 pips. And if you held it down longer into New York lunch, it offered you 38 pips and it closed um, this RTH gap right here. So um, we basically traded from RTH gap down to RTH gap. So RTH gap's very useful today. Crude oil. See if we had, um, see if we had a silver bullet between 10 and 11 on crude. Obviously, what crude did today is we resettled lower on the regular trading hours and then traded all the way back up, almost re fully refilling, repricing this RTH gap. But using your ICT silver bullet, it was right there. It's right there. AM silver. So there was your um, crude oil AM silver right there. Um, let's say that you got short, well, let's say right or long right there. Immediate profit of 45 pips, secondary profit of 65 pips, ultimate profit of 97 pips. Natural gas. RTH gap was obviously a big player today. Let's see if we have 10 to 11. Oh, natural gas. Okay.
Okay. Um, sorry, I just had to give my voice a, a rest. Yeah, very obvious here on um, just super clean on natural gas. There it was. Um, you ended up holding a little bit of drawdown. That's fine. Um, let's see. Yeah, so natural gas here was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful trade. Um, ultimately offering you 195 pips. First swing was 97 pips. Second swing, 194 pips. There it was, my friends. There was a big trade of the day. Let's see if you could have seen that. There is your RTH inefficiency on natural gas. The price was re coming back and repricing. So this was uh, not something that I caught. I did not trade this uh, setup today. However, I do want to tell you that this is you know, this is something that's possible. This is not impossible to see. We have a buy side inefficiency on an RTH gap uh, from Friday the 19th of May. And price um, came down to the consequent encroachment of this long wick here inefficiency. And we just immediately repriced aggressively back up into this uh, buy side inefficiency. So it was visible and your entry mechanism being an AM silver bullet. Uh, this, was, this was your beautiful trade here offering you 195 pips total movement so beautiful beautiful uh, setup here on natural gas really excited to see that these silver bullets can offer you such great returns bonds 30-year bonds 10 to 11 okay and yeah, there was right there immediately you can see it my friends there it is am silver bullet and that offered you 19 bond ticks uh, immediate profit second swing was 18 ticks and then you needed to be out of the trade at that point as it was finding support so 19 bond ticks offered um, maximum 20 bond ticks so those are a lot of those are big big plays by the way so that would be a great trade there a short on the am silver bullet we're also coming down and we're repricing uh, Thursday's RTH gap. So there you have it, uh, 20 bond ticks on the AM Silver Bullet and the dollar index, 10 to 11, 10 to 11. Yeah, there it was right there. Very, very visible. Nice big separation between the candles. And there was your AM Silver Bullet on the dollar index. So you get long on the AM Silver Bullet. Uh, let's say you get long at the fair value gap. You take 14 pips of drawdown. First swing offers you 123 pips. Second swing offers you 178 pips. So 100% um, success rate on the um, AM Silver Bullet. They're all there. Uh, you can see that every single on every single product there is a separation. There is an opportunity to be found on the AM Silver Bullet. You don't need another model. This is all the model that you need. Uh, maybe combine it. You know, get your inefficiencies concepts uh, better drawn out with your RTH gaps and other things. But the basic premise that an inefficiency should form between 10 and 11 New York local time and then go seek liquidity. It's on every single product, folks. It's it's on every single product. So there it was. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this review of all of the Friday, uh, June 23rd, AM Silver Bullets. Um, Apex Trader Funding is running a 90% uh, off sale right now. My coupon affiliate link is in the description below. My affiliate link, which should offer you a discount, is in the description box below. So if you want to sign up for an evaluation account, start trading yourself, um, please make sure to use my affiliate link. It is in the description box below. I'll be back later uh, with more videos. Bye.